Well, as I was thinking about what I was going to talk to you about this morning, so many stories in almost 40-something years of ministry just flashed through my head, and I said, there's no way I can do it in five minutes. It just wouldn't do it justice. So I started to think about what to talk about, and the Lord just kept putting on my heart is, just get to where the rubber meets the road. Why do we do missions, and what is it about? And so many stories and incredible ways that God has worked in my life and through my life into other people's lives. And it seems like missions just seem to just entwine themselves through me. Um, the, the greatest commandment God gave us was to love one another. But the second one is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And each and every one of us here that is saved by his name is a missionary. And our mission field is the highways and the byways and the stores and the, the workplaces that we go every day. And as we gather here, this is a feeding place for us to come and refresh and renew, to hear his word and lift each other up. But when we go through those doors, we're hitting the mission field. And that's what we need to be like as Christians. We need to go out into the mission field and save the lost like he asked us to. That is our job to do as Christians. And I'll just real quickly share one story, as quick as I condensed can, uh, about a missionary that to show you how one act can lead to another to another and how it affects so many people. I had a customer in our store that was a very obnoxious, <laughs> terrible, not so nice person that I dealt with all the time. He was a landscaper. And uh, just always seemed to be in a mess and liked to drink a lot and get high a lot. And, but I just loved on him and did what we could for him because his bosses were good friends of mine. And anyway, over the years, I got to know him pretty well and kind of just loved on him when he came in, just kind of looked past his badness, you know. And then on one Sunday morning, uh, we had a lady come forward during an altar call, and she gave her life to the Lord. And over the next few weeks, we got to know her and found out that she had a marriage that was on the rocks and life wasn't so great and we needed to pray for her husband. He would not come to church, wanted nothing to do with it, and didn't care what she did, just leave me alone. So we uh, talked to her for a while and come to find out her husband was this man that I know at the store. <laughs> so to cut through a lot of years of this stuff, anyway, long story short, we decided to do a Memorial Day service for veterans at Grass Valley Assembly. And we put on a full Vietnam reenactment, and we had color guards. I was one of the Air Force, and we carried the flags forward and just did all this. We packed it out with over 300 veterans four times. And um, we asked um, this young man if he would come and be a part of this. We knew he wouldn't come to church, but he might come for this because he was really a military enthusiast, and he liked the military, and he was kind of a Rambo type. And so anyway, he, he agreed. And he said, I'll come check it out. If it's something I think I can do, I'll do it. If not, I don't want no part of it. And I said, well, it's not a church function. It's, it's for the veterans. So he came, and he got involved in it. And, and uh, we got him going as a soldier. And this enactment that we did was three soldiers in a foxhole. And we had one soldier that was called the preacher man. He was the born-again one that was always preaching to him in the foxholes. And we did this reenactment. And uh, we had bombs coming in and helicopters flying. And, Anyway, he ends up, the preacher man ends up getting these three young men saved. And then we flash forward 10 years later where they come to Washington to the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And they're all dressed in suits and they're looking for the names of their comrades. And they come upon the preacher man. And they all put their hands up on his name. And what we had done is put a, a smoke plexiglass screen up. We hand wrote 250 names in grease pencil on this, on this uh, wall. And when they touched his name, we backlit this plexiglass wall. And behind it was the silhouette of the preacher man touching him back. And that touched this young man's life. And three weeks later, he came to the Lord and got saved. And grew and was on fire for God. And over the next couple of years, just grew and blossomed. Their family came back together. Their marriage was back together. The kids were all in church. And you know him today. They're missionaries that this church supports. Dan and Shannon Hensley to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Wow. 